greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than it. Come on, put your hands together. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God is our God. Come on. Cause our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God is our God. Then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against?
Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God. Our God. Let's do it again one time. Our God is greater. Our God you guys sing it. you feel that in the air today that is victory do you hear me that is victory for you today do you hear me today we've already been in here today we've been, we've been in here today and we've already had felt the victory so whatever it is whether it's for you and your family there's victory for you today claim it grab it shout it proclaim it because of this there is no one like our God. There is no one like our God. Yes, come on. There is no other God who can say. There is no one like our God. No. There is no one like our God. There is no one 
There's no one like our God, amen? He guides the hands of physicians, and we're believing in the name of Jesus. This will take care of this problem. But we need, I need some of y'all that know how to pray. Be praying tomorrow. We'll raise our hands towards him right now. Everybody say, in the name of Jesus. Go right now, yes. Oh, boy. Lord, be with this young little man, Lord. God, I pray, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, protection over the surgeon's hands tomorrow, the nurse's hands tomorrow, God. I pray, God, complete healing tomorrow, Lord. Oh, I pray you be a mom and dad as, as they worry about this, God. And give them peace, God. I ask for peace that passes all understanding, Father God. Be with little Gavin, Lord. I pray this will be a testimony in the future of the greatness that there is no one like our God, Father God. And God, you're the great physician. You're the great healer, Lord. And I even got right asked right now for the financial aspect of this surgery. God, I pray you be the source, God. I pray you bring in money that's never been brought in before, Lord. You're the source, God. It will not stress them out. And God, you will bring the money to pay the bills in the name of Jesus right now. I declare, by the stripes, he is healed in Jesus' name. No more torment in the name of Jesus. Oh, ha ha. This will be a testimony from generation to generation. You'll pass this on to your family and you'll tell them there is no one like our God. Yahweh, Jehovah Jireh, Lord of Lord, King of Kings, I am so. His name is Jesus. And we declare that in Jesus' mighty name I pray and all God's people said, oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now some of you today, some of you today are going through something or you've already gone through something or you're about to go through something and man, you need some prayer. If that's you, come to the altar right now and raise your hands right now and receive and say, there is no one like our God. Start declaring that out of your mouth, out of your mouth today, there is no one like our God. Hallelujah. There Amen. Is Let's go. No one like our God. Go ahead. No more. There is no one like our God. There is no other God who can say.
praise. This line today in this song is so powerful, and I want you to declare it over your lives and over your family's lives, over your children's lives. It says, The mountains shake before him, the demons run and flee at the mention of the name of King of Majesty. Everybody lift your hands right now. Father God, we declare in Jesus' name, in that name above all names, the mountains shake before him, the demons run and flee at the mention of the name King of Majesty. We declare that there is no power in hell or any who can stand before your presence today because you are the great I am. You are the great I am. You are the God who was and is to come. And today we worship you. Hallelujah. Holy, holy God Almighty. Come on. He's the great I am.
this morning we got in here we all had to fight through something but let me tell you something God met us and today he wants to meet you when we get to that part where we start singing the great I am I want you to shout like me and Mal are shouting I want you to shout victory I want you to just woo because you know that you are still this is the God who appeared to Moses who said I am the I am that's all he needs to be come on we're going to sing the mountains shake before me come on sing with me come on the mountains shake before him the demons run and flee yes at the mention of the name king of majesty there is no power in hell or any who can stand before the power and the presence of the great i am 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 he's the great i am great i am great i am great i am he's a great i am hallelujah hallelujah holy holy god almighty he's a great i am who is worthy none beside thee god almighty he's a great i am shake before you the demons run and flee at the mention of the name king of majesty there is no power in hell or any who can stand before the power and the presence of the great i am the great i am the great i am give him a shout Declare it over your family. I'm declaring it. The 
mountains shake before him. The demons run and flee at the mention of the name King of Majesty. There is no power in hell or any who can stand before the power and the presence of the great I am. The great I am. The great I am. The great I am. 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 Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands. Holy, holy God Almighty. He's a great I am. Who is worthy? Yes, none beside thee. God Almighty, He's a great I am. Yes, hallelujah. Holy, holy God Almighty, He's a great I He's a great I am. Sing it again, come on. Hallelujah. Holy, holy God Almighty. He's a great I am. Who is worthy? None beside me. God Almighty. He's a great I am. Turn to heaven, his 
broke your name in two nights Then through the darkness Your loving kindness Tore through the shadows of my soul The work is finished The end is written Jesus Christ
of Jesus. Come on, give him one more praise. Yeah! Hallelujah! 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 Sing it, Hallelujah! It's okay to praise him in church, church. It's the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. I am is his name today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's pray. Before I dismiss the kids out, we do have a baby dedication. I just want to pray over the service. Raise your hands and say in the name of Jesus. Oh, there's power in that name. It's saying again in the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We declare your Lord in Scott County. Your Lord in Southern Indiana. Your Lord in the United States of America. Your Lord in this world right now. And right now we take every thought captive. In the name of Jesus, we declare your kingdom come and your will be done. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Have a seat, a really real quick. short one, because usually. The pastor says something to the parents, but I'll be talking to myself, so that's a little, little odd. But I just say this. Today we dedicate this child, Connor Matthew, to the Lord, recognizing the responsibility of parenthood and your dependence on God and your strength and wisdom to fulfill your duties as parents. Do we, Liz, me and Liz, Liz and I, do we present our child before God in dedication? We do say we do. We do. We do. Let's try that again. One, two, three. We do. All right, we're out of sync here. We haven't had much sleep. I'm sorry. So now I'm going to go to the congregation. You know, I'm excited that Connor gets to grow up. I, I almost grew up with Donnie. I was 13. So I consider Donnie like a, almost a second dad to me. He's a tremendous man. He's been a tremendous. He's, he's been a, Donnie, a hand clap. I just feel like we need to do that. <laughs> He's giving Jesus. I love it. He's giving Jesus. But we're going to ask a question here, and I want you guys to, because he's going to be part of this family. This is a church of God. This is little, Connor's eight weeks, right, babe? Is he eight weeks old? And it says this. I'm going to ask a question. You say, we do. Recognizing the responsibilities that we have as a congregation, do you agree to deal with him lovingly and tenderly, seeking to manifest the Christian spirit towards him always? If so, say, we do. We do. Do you promise to provide spiritual instructions for him? at this church, giving of your time, talents, and money to make this possible so long as you are part of this congregation? If so, say we do. Amen. Do you promise to encourage? Everybody say encourage. encourage. Oh, encourage these parents. We need it, all right, to do as a promise in raising this child. If, he, if he so, say we do. Amen. Bible tells us in Proverbs 22, 6, and this it's not even as an eight-week-old baby. This is for your children, maybe 40, 50, 60 years old, that still walked away from the Lord. The Bible says this, and the Word of God is true. It says, train up a child in a way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not, it says, will not depart from it. If you're raising your children in the ways of the Lord, they will, they will not depart from it. They might, have, well, they might be a latecomer. They might have gone away a little bit, but they will come back in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. 
The Bible says all should call names shall be saved. And we declare that in Jesus' mighty name. At this time, raise just touch your hands forward to Connor. <laughs> he's, he's ready to eat. In the name of Jesus, God, I speak forth the giftings that you have from for Connor right now in the name of Jesus. I got a gift for God. He will, he will follow and go after your presence and your power and your love and your mercy and your grace more than any temptation of the world right now in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against him shall prosper, Lord. He will walk in the ways of the Lord in righteousness and holiness all the days of his life, Father God. I pray for the double anointing upon him when he speaks even as a young child. I pray for wisdom upon him, Lord. I thank you for Connor. I thank you for he is such a joy to Liz and I and to his siblings and I believe for this church. And thank you for what you're doing. And thank you for this bundle of joy. In Jesus' name I pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Before we get going, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you. God, for this wonderful church. I thank you for the wonderful people that are here, God. God, thank you for your presence and your anointing and your, your power and your mercy and your grace. It's forever and your faithfulness, Lord. We thank you most importantly for Jesus who died on the cross for our sins. And three days later, you rose again for us, Christ. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for the service. You be, bless us and bless the ones around us. In Jesus, my name I pray. And now, God's people said, Amen. Amen. What is in your camp? How many here like to go camping? Is anybody? All right, right on, yeah. I asked Tracy to go camping with us with the Royal Ambassador. He says, can I bring my camper? I said, come on, that's not camping, Tracy. <laughs> and he, he wouldn't come. He wouldn't bring his camper. But I don't blame him. He's a really nice camper. But what is in your camp? So when you go camping, you have like a list of things you're going to bring. You got all this stuff that you want to bring. And how many times have you gone camping and you've forgotten something? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? And you're like, oh, I got to run to the closest Walmart or the closest Dollar General to buy that. You know, we, we really need toilet paper. I didn't think about that, all right? Or, or we really need this, that, or the other. And when you go camping, it's a great adventure. When growing up as a child, we didn't have a lot of money, so camping was like our vacation in our backyard. And we loved it, man. We go camping in the big tent, and it was cheap and it was fun. You know, mom would get this book out and she would read this book of, what was it, the Bears? The Bears of Blue River, which I started reading to my children when I was in Maine, which it made it more real because we had bears in our backyard. You know, like, whoa, I don't want to go outside and play in the backyard, you know. But so the Bears of the Blue River. So with all that said is the camping, and you, you get all these things that you want for camping. But you know, if I go camping, I'm not going to take a football helmet. That doesn't make any sense, right? When I go to camp, I'm going to bring, I'm going to bring, you know, my backpack, and I'm going to bring sleeping bags, and I'm going to bring cooking utensils, but I'm not going to bring, you know, something totally random in my camp because if I bring that along, it's going to be extra weight and extra work. Is anybody with me so far? How many like? How many people like extra work? Anybody? No. No one wants extra. If you do. You can watch Connor at nighttime, I'm just saying, all right, <laughs> from nine to five, <laughs> he's alive, you know, and so, but no one wants extra work, and you're not going to pack something that you're going to have to carry to your campsite if you're not going to use it, and it's like that, our spiritual walk, we've got our camp set up, and we're packing stuff into our camp that we should never carry, can I get amen? amen. See, you're, you're packing all this stuff. And that stuff was never meant to be on the trip. For some reason and somehow in our mind, the enemy deceived us along the way. And we started carrying some stuff that we're never meant to carry. So a lot of us today, I can sense, are, are carrying the word as regret. There's a lot of a, a shame and there's a lot of regret. I wish I would have done this or I wish I would have done that. Something maybe 20, 30, 40 years ago. But you know, you got to forgive yourself, amen? amen? Jesus has already forgiven. You have to forgive yourself. And the Bible says there is no condemnation. Those are in Christ Jesus. So stop letting, my dad was old school. He'd always say, stop playing the VCR. He shows how old he was, all right? <laughs> stop playing the, the VCR. Stop playing the DVD over and over in your mind. If Christ has forgiven you, 
You've got to take every thought captive in the name of Jesus and start walking in freedom and say, man, I don't want these things in my camp. I don't know about you. I don't want extra work. I don't want to carry stuff that I was never supposed to carry. What is in your camp? Open your Bibles today, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I love the scripture. This is the first scripture that my wife and I memorized together. And she said, I don't know if we're supposed to be together. I don't know if we're supposed to be a couple. And I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to have the Lord give us both a scripture. You tell me what it is tomorrow, and I'll tell you what my scripture is. We both came from Romans 12, 1, 2. And she says, I think maybe you might be the one. <laughs> so whatever it takes. <laughs> I'll walk to Seymour, girl. You know what I mean? <laughs> I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living what? Now check this next word out. We don't hear this word a lot in church. It says what? Holy. Everyone say holy. holy. Acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Now look at verse 2. And do not be conformed to this what? Oh, hallelujah. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect. Everybody say perfect. perfect. Will of God. See, we know that there's things. We're, we're not, the world, I say this over and over again, has affected Christianity too much. But I tell you what, I, got, I am ready, and I know this church, I can see in your all's eyes, we are ready to bring the gospel to the church, to the world, amen? That the, they need to see the power of Almighty God. Be, why aren't they seeing the power of Almighty God? And people are saying things, well, God's not real, God's dead, God, God's this, God's that. God is real, but he's looking for someone to be a holy and living sacrifice, Amen. And we don't like that word holy. Oh, holy? What do you mean? I mean, holy, be more like Jesus than anything else. Now, I know I preached a little bit like a sex week, and I'm going to do a different angle. But I understand the holiness of God. And I say you before, holiness is not the way you dress. All right? I like shorts. My favorite shorts to wear are the N1 Walmart shorts. I just love those things, all right? Nine dollars, you can't beat them, you know? I bought me some N1 basketball shoes, you know, the other day. I was like, sweet. Got like 20 bucks in this. It's great. <laughs> it's like Under Armour, come on. <laughs> when I was a kid growing up, N1 was the greatest stuff you could buy. You know, now it's Walmart brand, but I still like it. All right? You know, it's not the way you dress. Holiness. Remember when... When Moses went before the, the bush, he said, take off your shoes because this is holy ground. We forget that God is holy. Infidelity and, and things are going on rapid in the church and people aren't seeing the power of Almighty God. Drinking is going on rapid and, and partying is going on and the one where we're not seeing the power of, of Almighty God. God is a holy God. Everybody say holy. I just feel like I stepped on everybody's toes, all right? I'm sorry. I'm not here to preach about me. And I'm telling you what, I do not have it together. I struggle every single day, amen? I'm preaching to myself today, church. When I get frustrated, do I, yes, I get frustrated. Do I get discouraged? Yes, I get discouraged. But I want to chase after the holy God that we serve, holy, righteous God. I don't want any of that junk in my camp. You know, because when you start having this junk in your camp, it doesn't just affect you. It affects everybody in your camp. I got some people in my camp. I've got the Jackson 5 at Moon Road, all right? That's so cool to me. I'm like, God, you are so awesome. Uh, you know, A, B, C. I'm not going to sing it, all right? <laughs> but, you know, you know, I got the Jackson 5, and then I got a great church. My church family, I don't want to bring this junk with you guys. Yeah. I want freedom. I want liberty. I want to walk in the power of Almighty God. Yeah. I don't want anything to hold me back. I don't want anything in my camp that should not be there. Because we're a living sacrifice. You know what goes in must come out. I'm going to say it again. What? goes in, must what? You know, I have, 
I love Taco Bell. All right, and if I go eat, and you can tell looking at me, I know, Brad, don't shame on me, all right, but I have a dad bod, all right, and I'm not proud of it, all right, I, gotta, I can't preach like this for 35 minutes, all right, but when I start eating an, an extra large burrito and nachos and two cups of Mountain Dew, what's going to come out? This right here, all right? <laughs> And spiritually, it's the same way. You're going and putting on movies you shouldn't be watching. Can I get an amen? Oh, I smell. Oh, I start putting on music I shouldn't be listening to. I remember when I was 17, I went to a, a tent revival. Donnie was there. Donnie's been like, I think he was there I was born. All right, but Donnie was there too, all right? And, and we had a powerful move of God. Seen 150 people get saved one night and baptized. And we started burning all these just junk. These DVDs and this movie, we saw demonic, Greg was there too, we saw a demonic figure face coming out of the fire. But I was just silly, all right? Because I didn't thought to myself, oh, I could still listen to my music. I could still do some of the stuff that I want to do. I was warned by prophets in the church. I was warned by prophets in the tent revival that God, you need to master this, you need to make God Lord of your life. And what did I do? I kept on that music. I remember blaring out of there and hearing profanity coming out and saying those words to, to myself. What was I doing? I was making a declaration to Satan. Come on, someone say, oh, me. I know I'm preaching. Oh, oh man, but I'm telling you, church, we have to, they have to see a difference in the world. Oh, my, my, my. And, and I was pumping out this stuff, and for ne the next two years was hell. Can I say that in church? It was hell. Wayne, you know what I've been talking about. Derek, you know what I've been talking about. Everyone in this church knows what I'm talking about. And God was trying to tell me, you get this stuff out of your, get this stuff. And God was gracious. He had someone break into my car, steal all my stuff, steal my speakers, Aaron. I know that was rough. And my amp, all right, and stole everything. And I was foolish enough to go back and buy it again. I put that filth right back in there. I was wondering why I wasn't seeing the power of God. I was wondering why I was so tormented. I wonder why so much I could never really make God, I never made Jesus Lord of my life. Everyone say, Lord. Lord. See, I mean, that's why when we say the sinner's prayer, I say Lord two or three times because he has to be Lord of your life. Not just Lord of the moment. Come on. Not just Lord for the weekend. Not just Lord for, the, for a couple months. He has to be Lord of your life forever. Through your finances, through your marriages, through your workplace, he has to be Lord. I think he wants to preach. <laughs> and we allow these things to come in and wonder why we're not seeing the freedom of God. You know, but we know the enemy. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Look at, look at John 10.10. 10. Such a great scripture. It says, the thief does not come except to steal, to kill and destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it what? I think we all should know John 10, 10. I mean, that's one of my favorite scriptures. But we know the enemy wants to kill, steal, and destroy. I knew years ago, I had a friend of mine, this is about five years ago, and he was going through a really tough time in his life. And he calls me up, and he actually, I was selling him some chickens. I don't know, I'm, I'm a hillbilly. All right, but I was selling him some chickens, and he wanted some chickens, and I was loading everything up for him. But to be honest with you, I wanted to get rid of the chickens, but I really wanted to talk to him. That was the whole reason. And, and he said, you know, there's been some things going on, and, you know, this, that, and the other. And, and I said, you know, bro, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And I, I look at the scripture, what came, we said, I believe it was last week, when when God said to Cain, he says, sin is what crouching at your door. You must what? You must what? Come on over here. You must what? Oh, one more time. You must what? Thank you. Amen, crier was helping me out. Amen section back there. I knew what I was talking about. You must master it. He left. He, he cried for a moment. He said, yeah, I'm going to make things right with my wife. I'm, gonna, I'm going to do the right thing. Him and his wife are divorced now. He, there was infidelity, 
there were some really horrible things that happened in between that. And he left his wife, and now this man has walked away from the Lord. Now the woman has walked away from the Lord, and now they're totally broken, and now they have children that are broken. See, sin destroys everything. And he was like, man, you know, but she doesn't do this for me, or he doesn't do this for me. And, and I said, but you understand that sin is at your door, and I see the enemy. He's so close, and he wants to destroy you. You've got to get on your knees and ask for repentance. You just ask Jesus for help. And he kind of teared up, and he said, I'll, 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 I'll take care of that. But he didn't. Oh, me, church. Everybody say, oh, me. That's all of us. We're all selfish. We can't look at self as self-righteous way, but oh, me. Lord, forgive me, Lord. Let me be more like you. Let this carnal spirit, this carnal flesh die out and let your spirit rise up. I want to be led by the spirit and not by my flesh. Can I get an amen? Amen, amen. amen. And he said this in, about the enemy. We know he comes to kill, steal, and destroy and we ask her questions. We ask ourselves these questions a lot of times. When everything comes in and every, everything's at your camp, you ask the question, how did we get here? We've all asked that question, how did we get here? How could I be loving Jesus one moment and then the next moment I curse your name or I walk away from you? We remember Peter, the apostle. Uh, Peter was, when he was there and Jesus told him 24 hours before, he said, you know, the rooster's gonna crow three times and you will deny me. And he says, no, nah, no, nah, there's no way. I'll never deny you. I, I love you. It's been with him three years, and I would, never, I would never do that. I would never deny you three times. And we know the next 24 hours, Peter denied him three times. The same Peter, though, that wrote half of the New Testament. The same Peter that declared who Jesus was. The same Peter who walked on water. So today I'm going to look, take a step back and tell you that all of us are one step away from a, a great breakthrough or falling away from the Lord. We can never get to a point that we're so comfortable with the Lord. Constantly being aware of the enemy because you know he comes into 1 Peter 5 roaring like a what? He roaring like a lion knowing he wants to kill, steal, and destroy your family. Knowing he wants to come in your tent and hang out with you in that tent. So what do we bring in our tent? What do we sometimes bring into our camp? I got these. Our insecurities. You know, you're, if you look at yourself and your own natural ability, you'll always be insecure. Church, hear me out here. Hear me out a second for Eli, I promise you. It's going to blow you mind. I'm not, not talking just to you, but everybody around you. <laughs> He's my leader. Insecurity. Because our, our confidence is not in our own ability. It's what Jesus did for us. Amen? I, my, my, I have no confidence in me, but I have my confidence is through Jesus. See, and this is, where, this is where we do. We bring this into our camp because we're so insecure because of our childhood or we're so insecure because of our marriage or we're so insecure because of life circumstances and we start trying to fill the void of our insecurity. When Jesus is saying the whole time, I am your security. Why are you bringing this into my camp? Because I'm your security. I'm your confidence. I am who I said I am. And, and, and we, we, we have to think it's all this stuff. And, and today, the, the world today, is, you know, we, who are we? And we, all the, the social media tells you, oh, you're this or that or the other. You are a child of the Most High. Amen? Man, that's all I need. All I need is Jesus. He died on the cross for my sins, and that's all I need. He's my security. Oh, here's another one. We're going to talk about this in a second with jealousy. About to say jealousy. You bring these in your tent. You, you're jealous of people. Man, I tell you what. Can, I, can, can a, your pastor be real for a minute? Would that be all right? I'm going to let my guard down. You know, you think I'm perfect because obviously I'm not. All right? I get jealous sometimes when I see, when I see people that sleep through the night. All right? I'm just, I'm just going to be real. Johnny and Mary, I've been jealous of you all week. <laughs> Just kidding. I get jealous when I see people and they have children and they don't have, children don't have problems. That's something I struggle with. 
But I know my, my baby, Jameson Barry Jackson, is perfect. And God made him perfect. And I'm believing in the name of Jesus, I'm going to see that little boy restored and healed in Jesus' name. It's hard when you go places and you can't go places because he acts up. We have to tag team. When you go to a, well, Amanda knows what I'm talking about. Matt knows what I'm talking about. Some of you special need parents know what I'm talking about. But because of that, it's okay. I'm not going to be jealous. I'm going to be thankful for, the, for my little boy. The little boy that gets so excited about meatloaf. I mean, <laughs> they brought meatloaf on Thanksgiving. He was so excited. <laughs> this is another one. We all struggle. This is a pastor. It's really hard. Pride. Everybody say pride. pride. Man, pride. We, we, we think and we, we get, you know, we think we start doing it on our own. Because once again, because you're insecure of who you are and your confidence is not in Christ. It's in your own ability. And then the pride begins to sneak in. And you begin to say things like, well, you know, yeah, I did this or I did that. I mean, I, 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 you know, I don't watch a lot of sports, but it drives me nuts when they interview those basketball players and they talk about themselves in a third party. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Like, yeah, you know, man, what, what for me, what had us? Told myself, come on, Moses, you got this. You know, I was like, isn't he Moses? <laughs> I'm a little confused, all right? You know, pride, man, pride comes in. Man, I don't want to be, the Lord says come humble to his throne. But I want to go humble to the Lord. Just, Lord, humble me. Keep me humble. Knowing that every good thing is from you and you alone. I mean, I love it, man. Donnie was back here so cool. I said, love you like a second dad. He's like, he was given to Jesus, man. Donnie, that's awesome. Because he begins all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh-oh, uh-oh. We got, we got one that's going to be tough. Now, I'm not on social media. Just in case you didn't know. I'll tell you every week. <laughs> Gossip. You know, I believe Christians, we take this into our camp, or sometimes Christians are, we gossip and think it's spiritual. We need to pray for Greg Garriott. You know, he's, he's got some problems, but I'm praying for him. You know, he got mad at his wife. You know, he, he left work. And we, but we're going to pray for him right now. Let's, let's just pray right now. Come on, man. You don't have to tell them everything. Can I get an amen? amen? Oh, I'm so tired of seeing gossip Christians. I thought it was only in Indiana. I went to Maine in the same way. We're just going to pray in Jesus' name, period. You don't need to unload their laundry to them. We're just going to pray in Jesus' name. Man, I don't want to carry gossip in. I don't want to break someone down. I want to build someone up. Amen? Amen. amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Now, you know, I couldn't go, you know, I could not go a, one week without talking about this word. Everyone loves it. Offense. Does it say offense? <laughs> <It's> offense. <laughs> I don't even know. Carol made him this, by the way. No, I'm just kidding. But, you know. <laughs> but offense, man. We, we, we all hold an offense that we know in, in Luke 17, 1, we talked about it several times. Offenses will come, but what we do when they come. I don't know about you. When an offense comes, I want to take it captive in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. I don't want an offense. So this is the last one. And everybody's going to think, this is, oh, this is for the men right here. This is for everyone. Lust. Lust. Man, I tell you, so I'm not talking about a sexual lust. And I know that, that's part of it. But when you lust over something, oh, I like to have that new car. Oh, I'd like to have that new job. Or I, I, wish, I, I wish my marriage was like their marriage. I, I, wish, I, I, just, I just wish I had it like they had it. And you start desiring and you start thinking of, oh, I wish, I wish, I wish. Let me tell you, God's got you right where you need to be, amen? amen. So don't be worrying about what everyone else has. Just worry about yourself and your relationship with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Lust. And we take these things into our tent, and we're not seeing the freedom of God. Tell a quick story, and then we're going to go ahead and go ahead and turn your Bibles. We're going to skip over Psalms. 
Actually, put Hebrews eleven twenty five 25 real quick. Gary, this is just for you and, and Tracy back there, King James men. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for how long? Sin is only good for a season. These things are thinking, they look like they're good, they look great to me. But sin is only good for a season. You know, there was a, there was a famous pastor. This is before Jimmy Swaggart fell. And there was a famous pastor. Uh, and, and he fell and he had some infidelity. He had some money issues. He had some stuff going on back in the, back in the day. And, and one of the pastors said, you know, I'll never do that. I'll never do that. Or I'll never. When he said that, he opened himself up to an attack from the enemy. And what happened? This man fell even harder. And he was even a bigger pastor. See, we have to always be on guard and say, oh, that will never happen to me. By the grace of God. Hallelujah. Someone say grace. grace. By the grace of God. It will not happen. By the grace of God, we're not strung out in a, in a, in a dirty house right now, on a dirty couch. By the grace of God, you're an alcoholic. By the grace of God, your, your marriage is still together. By the grace of God, your children are still loving Jesus. Can I get an amen? amen. It's by the grace of God. Open the story now to 1 Samuel chapter 26. So David and Abishai went into Saul's camp and found him asleep. <clears throat> this is verse 7. This is 1 Samuel 26, 7. With a spear stuck in the ground beside him, Abner and his soldiers were lying asleep around him. God surely has handed your enemy over to you this time. Abshai whispered to David, let me pin him to the ground with one thrust, he was talking to David, of the spear, and I won't need to strike him twice. No, David, do not kill him. Now listen to this, verse 9. For who can remain innocent after attacking the Lord's anointed one? Man, he... Even though Saul was living a wicked life, he understood that was God, the man God put in his position. I want to say something real quick to a lot of the new Christians out there today. It's to be careful of what you say about other pastors. I don't really care what you say about me, but, <laughs> you know, and I'm not saying, we're, 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 ooh, I don't mean that at all. But there are the pastors, pastors of these all over the, all over the world. Be careful what you say about men and, and women of God. Amen? See, David understood that. Go ahead in verse 10 there. Surely the Lord will strike down someday, says David talking, or he will die of an old age in battle. The Lord forbid that I should kill the one he has anointed. But take his spear and his jug of the water beside his head, and let's go out of here. So David took the spear and the jug of water that were near Saul's head, and when he, when he and Abshai got away without anyone seeing them or even walk, waking up, because the Lord had put Saul's men into a what? David climbed up the hill. Uh, David, excuse me. David climbed the hill opposite of the camp until he was at a safe distance. Let's stop right there. So David knew that Saul understood that David was hiding out in the area. So Saul brings 3,000 of his best men. The Bible actually says that he brought his elite men. He saw something in David that scared him. I'll break that down a little bit more. The enemy sees something in you. I said the enemy sees something in you that you don't see in yourself. And, you, and you're wondering, you're saying, you know, why am I going through all these battles and struggles and all this, this, and that? Because the, the enemy wants to, to kill and still destroy you. He doesn't want you to flourish. He doesn't want you to have an abundant life. Saul was scared because he saw the Spirit of God was on him. And you know today, the Spirit of God lives on each and one of you if you made Jesus Lord of your life. Amen? And, and David was just... Do what God told him to do. Now, it doesn't make any sense. We talked about this before. He was running for nine years in caves. To me, in the natural thinking, that doesn't sound like the will of God. But David knew that's what God wanted him to do. Here he was just trying to stay alive, trying to keep his men one step away from Saul. This was the life that he was living. 
And, and Saul went down there to, to find out and, and knew that David was nearby. And they, so David sent some spies out and, and he says, Are, is, is he camping over in this area? And he says, he is. So David and, and his men went down there to check on Saul and he was in a deep sleep. Question what we're asking today is this. How did David get in to Saul's camp? How did David get in to Saul's camp? See, Saul must have done something to allow him to come into his camp. Saul didn't give him an invite, did he? Did he give him an invite? No. Did he, did he, he, if he knew David was there, he was trying to kill him. But why did, what happened? How could King Saul, with his elite troops, allow a shepherd boy to come into his camp? You about get me, is anybody getting this yet? And it's the same way with us, because he, King Saul began starting with pride and jealousy towards David. Remember when we talked about this before? When David, was, when David killed Goliath in, in 1 Samuel 17, they all went through the town and said, Saul kills a thousand, but David kills his ten thousands. And then there was an opportunity right there that he got offended and he got upset. And all he wanted to do, all he could think about, all he could obsess about was killing this little shepherd boy who in the previous part of the story was asking for anybody to kill the giant because Saul was supposed to kill the giant originally, but he didn't. See, it's just like that with the Lord. We allow things to come in David because David was walking in the will of God. David had the spirit of God in there. He walks in there and, it, and they didn't know anything was going on. It's kind of like us spiritually. We, we think we're doing okay. We think we're doing all right. And the enemy comes in, and we don't even know it. I had a man years ago, or months ago, that I admired tremendously. And he was in ministry. And I, I was talking to him. I could tell that the presence of God left him. And he had no idea. And I was at a Walmart parking lot of all places. And this guy was yelling at me. I tell you what, I wanted to rage, you know, but I was like, Lord, Lord, it's not about me. And if you allow this to happen, you're going to be glorified in a Walmart parking lot. Amen? And finally he stopped. The Lord just stopped his mouth. He was yelling so loud. People all around were looking. And I said these words to him. I said, the presence of God has left you and the anointing of God is no longer in your life. And I said, you're so worried about bitterness and unforgiveness that you have forgot the number one thing, which was the presence of Almighty God. Amen. And because of that, right now, you'll never do ministry in this county. And he went, and I didn't even know I said it. And I was like, and he just kind of teared up and walked away. And I was like, Lord, that was harsh. But you know what? I just found out the other day. The man is doing a little, I think he's doing a little bit better and he's starting a, a ministry up north somewhere. So I believe God is going to restore him. And I know that was a breaking spot in his life. He just jerked back like, and I jerked back. I like, what did I just say? That's very offensive. But it was what the Lord allowed to happen. I was like, come on, man. He said, it's okay. I was trying to give him a hug. You know, I was going that route, you know. He did not want to hug. He wanted to punch, all right. <laughs> but you know what happened? As I believe God is working that, those words through. And what happened is King Saul left the number one thing was the presence of Almighty God. Church, we allow these things to come into our camp. The number one thing is our relationship with Jesus. And then we lose it. And then we look back and we're like, where did this, how did this happen? How did I get right here? And, and when David finally, he got on top, of the, on top of the hill. And he said, Abner, which was David's, or Saul's commander. Abner, wake up. Abner said, who is that? Who's hollering at me? And King Saul knew that voice. And he said, David, is that you, my son? And he said, yes, I've got a spear and I've got a jug. And they should have guarded the Lord God Almighty. They should have guarded the king, and they didn't. He said, I could have took you out, Saul, but I didn't. And Saul cried, and he, David, I'm so sorry. 
I'm so sorry that I allowed these things. Please come back home. See, David understood the power of restoration. More revenge. We always, as Christians, have to go at the angle of restoration. Amen? He wanted to see King Saul restored. And he knew one day that God was going to have him be king, but he was okay to whenever that time would come. Because he wanted to walk step and step. He wanted to be in the presence of Almighty God. And to King David, that was the number one thing that was important to him, to be in the presence of Almighty God. Becky, we come on forward. We ask ourselves these questions today. We've allowed things maybe to come into this, to our life that we should have never allowed to come into our camp. And it's been a rough road for you maybe. You know, but Jesus is here. One, when you're one breath away from God restoring, amen? You're one breath away from God restoring, Amen? But today we need to start cleaning our camp up. If you go camping at the end of the campsite, you go out and you, when I was in the Boy Scouts, we would do this. We would go and we would do all the trash, our campsite and the ones around us. And then we put the fire out and we, would, we always dug a hole to put the fire in and we cleaned everything out. So we came, when they came to the campsite, it looked better than when we first got there. Some of us today spiritually need to clean some of our campsites up. We've allowed some junk and some trash to come in. And, we, and we've lost the number one thing is our relationship with Jesus, his presence. Nothing is like the presence of Almighty God. Could you stand with me today? I was preaching a couple of weeks ago. I had an opportunity to preach up at New Frankfurt Pentecostal Church. Man, we had a, we had a good time power of God was moving strong. Prophecy, seeing healings moving. And I get in my car and I call my wife and say, I'm on my way home. I'll be home hopefully in about 20 minutes. And I said, baby, I ain't never had meth or any type of drugs like this, but man, the Holy Ghost, the presence of the Almighty God is so much better than anything this world can throw at me. Nothing compares to the presence of Almighty, Holy God who said, let there be light, and there was. He knows the hairs on your head, and the world is trying to pervert this and dilute this, and we got to say today, I don't want this stuff in my camp anymore. It's time for me to clean up this camp. It's time for me to clean up my spiritual self. It's time for me to be the man and woman of God you call me to be. Walk in freedom. Everybody say freedom. Torment no longer. Torment. Oh, ah, I've been waiting all day to tell you that. No longer in Jesus' mighty name. No longer. You're going to do the right choice. He's got you this far. Everything will work out, says the Lord God Almighty. I will make every step clear for you. I will make everything clear to you. You will know you and your wife will be in agreement. Your children will be in agreement. And everyone around will see my hand is on your life right now, says the Lord God Almighty. In Jesus' name. Oh, Hashanah. Thank you, Lord. So right now today, question, is it time to clean our camp? If it is, come on forward today with me right now. Sing this song and start